for coming out, guys. As you probably noticed, we've kept it much smaller than last year. We thought we'd actually have people who owned our shares rather than people who just wanted a free drink. Um, and plus, it allows for a lot easier conversation for people rather than being in a, a crowded room. So that was, our, that was the idea of it. So um, as other years, we're very lucky to have Mr. Rule join us. Um, Rick is uh, uh, going to talk about the overall markets and some other thoughts. And um, so we'll hand it over right away. Okay. This is useless, so I won't give it to you. I should look. Nobody has ever accused me of um, speaking in soft voice, so I, I think that'll be okay. So, you know, every year when I've addressed this group, I've tried to have a theme. Uh, the address uh, uh, three years ago was the coming bull market in uranium. Of course, last year's speech was paraphrasing Pat Patsy Cline. I was so wrong. Uh, and so this year, what I've decided to do is talk about something that's really universally unpopular, since there's so few of you. I want to talk to you about arithmetic. Uh, before you leave, let me explain this to you. Because this talk about arithmetic is actually something that's going to make you sick, and then it's going to make you well. I want to talk about the fact that the market, the market that we exist in today, is a market built on narrative, not arithmetic, which is why most people make money. Pardon me, why most people lose money. You know, Dev is really smart. Normally, before I give a speech, they fill me full of coffee. And Dev fills me full of red wine. This is arithmetic. He's trying to lower the IQ to the point where I say something that's really helpful to him. Anyway, let's get back to arithmetic. One part of the uh, market arithmetic which amuses me is that a market that's fallen like the TSXV by 90% in nominal terms, more than that in real terms, because you know how they game the index, 90% in nominal terms is somehow riskier than it was before it fell by 90%. Now, arithmetic would say that a market that's fallen by 90%, if the narrative is the same, is precisely 90% more, less risky. But the arithmetic is when the risk has been taken out of the market by the pricing, because the experience of risk is so much more recent that the market is more risky. Horseshit. Narrative. Not arithmetic. Let's look at a different piece of arithmetic just for fun. This one really amuses me. The uranium business. Kind of topical today, right? The uranium business. Cameco, who I understand knows something about uranium, suggests that the industry on a global basis requires a 65 US dollar uranium price to earn its cost of capital. So here's the way the arithmetic works in uranium right now. You make the stuff for 65 bucks, and you sell it for 35 bucks. You lose $30 a pound, and because you're a miner, you try and make it up on volume, right? This is arithmetic. What's the second part of this equation? The second part of this equation is that although, particularly in my country, the land of the free and the home of the brave, everybody hates uranium, it's 18% of primary electrical generation in the United States. So if you take the first piece of math, right, you lose 30 bucks a pound, and the second piece of math, which is it generates 17% of the base load power in the United States, the equation, sorry to keep with the math theme, is one of two things happen. Either the uranium price goes up to cover the cost of capital, or the lights go off. Those are your only two choices. Now I leave it to you to figure out which it's going to be. Will the price go up or the lights go up? Oh, wait a minute, maybe it could be wind. What do you do when the wind buzzer doesn't blow? How about solar? Anybody see their solar shells working overtime right now? We've got this thing called night, okay? There's two choices. Either the price goes up or the lights go up. Those are the only two choices. You can produce a commodity for less than your cost of production till your balance sheet runs out of gas, and then it's over. So that's arithmetic, right? Final piece of arithmetic I want everybody to think about. You got a market. 10,000 butchers, bakers, candlestick makers. And all these people take a uranium stock. Fission, down. And then you have a different actor that comes in the market. A Chinese actor with billions of dollars that's in the uranium business. And they pay a 40% premium to market because they want to see the thing in pr production and they want the product. Now, who do you figure is better at math? You reckon it's the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, who figures that a market that's down by 90% is 90% more risky? 
that figures that a uranium price of $35 is sustainable and it costs $65 to make it? Or do you figure that a Chinese quasi-competitor who owns a deposit in Namibia and is in, a, in the uranium business, who do you figure is right? Somebody paid a 40% premium and somebody sold the stock off. I would submit to you that this is all arithmetic. Anybody with me so far? Anybody disagree with me? I'm really curious. I mean, even after the wine, I kind of believe this shit. <laughs> so, the upshot of this, we've been through what we laughingly call the valley of the shadow of death. By the way, I think it has a while to go. I'm looking right here at a guy who's been through a lot of cycles with me. And my experience has been when issuer capitulation starts, which we've just seen the last two months, that means the bear market has 18 months to run. It's interesting how I look at that. At age 63, you know, I've been through a lot of five-year cycles now. And five years is seeming like a less dramatic amount of time. Dev, from the bottom of the last cycle in Strathmore to the top of the last cycle, how far does Strathmore run? From 15 cents to? It went from 1.6 million market cap to 580 million. OK, so let's think about it. Suppose that we had five years left in this cycle. And suppose, <laughs> what was that number? 1.6 million to 500 plus million. Let's throw those numbers out. <laughs> suffice it to say, <laughs> suffice it to say that even if you're early, the rents that you recover by being right are so stupid that in the arithmetic sense, you could apply almost any discount rate that you want. And it doesn't matter. If the price has to go up, and the price can go up, the price will go up. And if the fact that the price goes up generates the type of returns that it has in the last three bull markets, suppose that number got cut by 90%. Arithmetically, it's still unbelievably stupid, unbelievably stupidly nice. My predecessor in US retail stock distribution of Canadians was a wonderful guy, a strange guy named Jerry Pope. And most of you aren't old enough to remember Jerry Poe, but I remember at the San Francisco Gold Show years and years ago, Jerry Poe said like this, he said, folks, it's important that he, this guy, out of the South for 40 years, and he practices Mississippi accent every day in America, you say, folks, it's important that you listen to me, because you are going to be dirty, filthy, stinky, slimy, rich. <laughs> I know those are wonderful words in the market. But the truth is, all of you, I think, remember the upshot of the bear market from 1998 to 2002. You remember how stupid you felt in the year 2000. You remember how smart you felt in 2006. Pass this prologue. It's going to happen again. If you choose the best companies and you choose commodities where not only the price can go up, but the price will go up, over time, and time becomes less important than direction, you're going to be right. Uh, you're going to make a lot of money. Uh, and you're going to deserve it. This is a crowd that's a quarter the size of the crowd that we had last year, which is also, in arithmetic terms, very good. Uh, I want to especially thank Dev. You know, I've had a lot of uh, promoters in my life, and I've had some that have made me look smart, a few. And I've had some that have made me look stupid, a lot. And I prefer the guys who have made me look smart to the guys who made me look stupid. And Dev is one of those who has made me look smart. Now, in return for saying these nice things about Dev, he's allowed me to give you a commercial presentation. A given, given, Liz, where are you? She's back. Come over Liz. here. Given how much money you're going to make in the next four years in vision and other things like this, I'm going to ask you three questions. I need to show of hands. But everybody has to answer. They're trick questions, by the way. But this is a smart crowd. You can get them right. Show of hands. How many people in this room? Well, I'll ask it three ways. How many people in this room believe they don't pay enough tax? <laughs> okay. How many people in the room think they pay just the right amount of tax? This is perfect. Not too hot, not too cold. Just the right amount of tax. You're full of shit. <laughs> How many people in the room believe that they pay too much tax? <laughs> Wait a minute. Show of hands. No free riding. Okay. <laughs> so you guys got the first question right, just by the way. Second question, you're all business people, business men, business women, you're all involved in finance, you're all involved in whatever you're doing, you're all involved in your life, and you're not doing
looking at, you're looking after your family, you have other areas. How many people, given how important it is to you with regards to this tax issue, are spending enough time personally fighting the issue, fighting the tax you pay? How many people believe that their efforts with regards to the social ills of tax, never mind it, does to you personally? How many people believe that you're spending enough time? Show of hands. See, this is very good, Liz. We were two for two. So, given that, how many people here believe that supporting an organization of young people, this is a young person, by the way, compared to me at least, how many people believe that supporting an organization of young people who have been serially successful over 10 years, fighting high taxation for Canada, and hire interns to do specific studies to prove their case would be worth doing? Raise your hand, your right hand, please. All of you who believe that need to give Liz your business cards. That's my commercial presentation. <laughs> Dev, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. You're going to make a lot of money, and Liz is going to help you keep some. <laughs> thank you. Hey, guys, thanks very much. Um, first of all, I guess um, we're, uh, we're a team, obviously, in here, and so um, uh, those guys want to have an intelligent discussion about geology. Where's Ross? Hey, where's Ross? There he goes. There he goes. Ross is uh, coming up here. Anyways, guys, uh, some of you guys know that this week's important for us. We get to, uh, uh, this week is our closing with our friends from China for about 82 million, so that's exciting. We get all the money, not just part of it like last time. Um, and so it's a big week for us. We're excited and uh, hopefully we'll see some of you guys in uh, PDAC where we can celebrate more. But um, so thanks. Uh, my marketing guys are here. Thank you for organizing. And above all, let's give Anna a great hand for organizing. Anna. know each other. If not, get to know somebody new. Don't get stuck at your own table, Roy. Um, go meet somebody and enjoy your evening and hopefully uh, um, this year is off to a rough start, which can only go better, right? 